Another day, another new contact on the horizon. And Drew and T's next stop is just under 300 miles away in the medieval market town of Crew Kern. They're on their way to Decorative Collective, an antique shop based at a former shoe factory that was in production for over 100 years. Thinking it would be the perfect backdrop to showcase his collection of antiques, it was bought by veteran dealer Carl Hennessy. Hello. Oh, hi. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, good morning. Carl. Welcome right. to... How are you doing? Hi. Thanks for having us. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, Welcome we, uh, to Crew Can you yeah. give us the full tour, please? I will. Well, I believe you've got some back outbuildings as well. Lots of outbuildings with lots of maybe well, more your type of stuff. I don't okay. know. Unusual day, because, yes, I've come to an antique shop and a large one at that, but what we're really here to see is what's behind the building, which is an old shoe factory. That's got to be worth a look. This is a lovely old building. Yeah, it? yeah, it was all part of the shoe factory distributing shoes. So how long have you been in the business, then? Uh, 42 years. Wow. And, but mostly, most of that was stripping pine the hard way. It's unusual to find a shoe factory in a, in a, in a town, a country town. So I'm hoping to find a few gems. Another little room here, which is just the... Uh... These open to the public? No. No, not normally. That's nice. So it's all come out from one clearance? Yeah. Yeah, just a, a Why garage. Why have they put that on it? I don't know. It's not... It. I don't know if it's broken. I don't... It doesn't look no. like it's broken. No. Why has he done that, then? Has he hung something off the bottom? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. There's a weird sort of homemade-ish bracket attached halfway up one of the articulated arms. Um, initially, it looks like it was put on there to fix a crack in the arm. Um, I don't think it was. I think they've put a piece of string, a wire or a spring attached to that to hold it in one place. I think that's all it was for. And we'll just take that off and restore the light. Produced in England in the 1930s, this small factory desk lamp has a cast iron base and enamel shade. Once restored and rewired, it could be worth around £150. It's not made up, it is right. Yeah, that can be £20 if you're oh, interested. Sold. Yeah, Incredible. there you are. Thank you. 20 quid for that little desk, like 20 quid. And I bought a fantastic light. The prices are, you know, dealer to dealer. So the prices are what they are. What about these? Have you got yeah. the galleries for those? No, no. They're glass? Yeah, yeah. Good, aren't they? Yeah. There's rather like yeah. a ring on them yeah. and chains hanging. It's a shame you haven't got the galleries. What's all yeah. that? Those galleries down there, they're nothing to do with them. No, anyway. I think that's to do with an old gas light. Shame. How can I put it? The clear and opaline glass tulip shaped, I would say. Lampshades. Really, really attractive. I've had them before and I've never had any with the fittings. <laughs> so these don't have them, but, you know, at the prices we're getting offered stuff, I'm definitely buying them. It's what's called flashed glass. Right. So they, there was the clear glass, and then they flashed at very high temperature white frit, which is the type of the yeah. stuff that makes the glass, across it. So they'll, they'll have sort of dipped yeah. it like oh, that yeah. at very high temperature yeah. um, to create that sort of opaline clear glass. Yeah, which is really cool, aren't they? Yeah. Bought as a run of three, these unique two-tone opaline pendant lights are hugely saleable. In great condition, once galleries and chains have been added, they could be worth around £450. The galleries, the galleries down there, the bits yeah. of galleries, I'll want yeah. to buy all of those. So you yeah. see that row on the floor there? Yeah. So all them? Yeah. Three of these? Three of these. What's the best? What, so it's got one, yeah. two, three, four, well, five. Well, you can have all of those, seven. three of those, for 60 quid. Sold. Thank you very much. Done. I've tied up £60 in three shades and a load of galleries. Now, the galleries I've got uses for immediately. Those I don't have the parts for, and those will sit there, even if they just go into stock, and one day I might be able to find a fitting that we'll be able to use with them. Very happy with these. Can we have yeah. a look at more? Is there more upstairs? Yes, yeah. Good start. Happy days. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. We're now upstairs in the old building, the old shoe factory, and it's lovely, it's really cool. It's like a sort of Dickensian film set. It's, it's quite incredible, but it isn't, it's for real. A lot of this stuff we haven't even sorted through. There's lots of old invoices, accounts, uh, shoes. Yeah, who's, who's the Wellington man? Little wellies. <laughs> God. Yeah, you, to be honest, you've got, like, the years with a stock up here. Oh, you yeah. You just clean it all up and yeah. put it in the shop. 
There is loads of stuff from a shoe shop up here. All sorts of bits and bobs, really. There you go. Oh. I think it's you. Do you like that? Yeah. Hmm. You like a flag, don't you, Drew? Yeah. That looks like a... Yeah, Patriot. Is that an old one? What's that one? Yeah. Look well, have a look. Is this, uh, oh, nice Union Jack, yeah. Is this for sale? Yeah, yeah, everything, everything's for sale. What's everything's for sale. Well, that one's a bit threadbare, That's isn't it? What is that stripey material? More of a banner, stripy banner. There's a really big Union Jack there, probably 1950s, really nice, a bit tatty, a bit faded, a bit worn. That makes it very, very attractive. And then with it is a big roll of fabric. And it's a great colour. What would they have used that for, then? I don't know. Coronation. It's had some repairs done to it. And... There was quite a bit of coronation stuff about, 53, yeah. whenever it yeah. was. So. Fabric is costly. Great big roll of it, and I can use that for upholstering ottomans, stools, chairs. I can, I can use that. You know, that'll go into stock and we will use it. This 1950s Union Jack flag and banner are thought to have been used to decorate the front of the shoe factory in celebration of the Queen's coronation in 1953. Today, they have a multitude of possible uses, and almost 70 years of wear and tear has left the fabric in exactly the condition Drew likes to find it. They could be worth around £200. We could have our own flag. <laughs> the we Pritchard should, flag. The Pritchard, the flag of... salvage flag. What do you want for that? That, that and this. That. Um, £40 the two. 40 quid the two. Antiques aficionado Drew Pritchard is in Somerset at an old shoe factory. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. He's come across some fabric and a flag thought to date back to the Queen's coronation in 1953. What do you want for that? That. That. And this. And that. Um, £40 the two. 40 quid the two. Sold. Thank you very much. Thank you. Glad I've flagged that up for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were £40 for the pair. Again, super buyable, can't leave it, got to take them, and it's dead fresh stock. I love today rummaging through old buildings full of unopened stock and boxes. Other people like, you know, bungee jumping or whatever, I like rooting through old cellars and lofts, it's great. One of the most handy things, and I think the thing that might turn us the biggest profit, is going to be that simple roll of material that we found. Because we're always buying. Yorkshire houses across the country are full of bits of furniture that need reupholstering. Carl has obviously been in the business an awful lot longer than I have, 42 years, I think he told me. Um, that comes with one thing, lots and lots of contacts and knowledge. So it's another contact. You never know, do you, in this business? But the business is about contacts and meeting people. It really is. That's what it, the core of it, that's what it comes down to. All sorted, yeah, nice all and easy. Yeah. Yeah. Marvellous, Carl. Yeah. Pleasure, thank yeah. you. Pleasure to Enjoy meet you. today. Enjoy. The hunt for new and exciting stock continues, and Drew and T are driving around 300 miles east to the coastal town of Southwold. They've had a call from a former lighting designer who, after many years in the theatre industry, has amassed a huge haul of lighting and other stage paraphernalia. Now retired, Jim Laws is hoping to sell off some of his collection. Jim. Hi, hi. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, 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 yeah. Right, you got some barns full of stuff for us to I have have. a look at, yes? I have, yes. Marvellous. Yeah. Let's crack on. Right, OK. Stage lighting. Yes. Right. Lots of it. A bit. Right, OK. Where are we best off starting then, Jim? There's sort of... There's stuff everywhere, isn't there? Are these in the interest? People don't make them like this anymore. No. They're obviously very good, aren't they? It's incredible. The mu Museum of uh, Theatre Lights. Jim is just one of those guys who finds great things, sees the value in them, and then goes, I'll just put it on a shelf. Blimey. And there it will stay until one day somebody else comes along and sees the value in it. And that's, that's a wonderful thing for me. Right, these, Jim. The, the music, music stands, stands, yeah, sure. The... Do you like those? Yes, yeah. Uh, I'd like them with a bit more age, but I'm not complaining. Ooh, do well, something with well, those. You'll the have old... to come back in ten years' time if you want to. <laughs> They're from a theatre, and these are from the um, uh, the musicians' pit, I think it's called. Made from cast iron, 
These triform music stands date back to the 1930s. Originally used in the orchestral pit of a theatre, they are height adjustable and feature hinged lights which enable the musicians to read their sheet music. Completely original with characterful wear to the paint, once cleaned and rewired, they could be worth around £750. Later go. Yeah. They don't yes, seem... I could sell those for you. you. Sure. Yeah. If we did 175 for the three. Yes, Would that be that, all right? Yeah, that's OK. Be OK. Thank you. And leave you with the rest yeah. of them. Always had good luck with these. They always seem to sell. They're great fun things for the house if you're a musician or, you know, restaurant. As you go into a restaurant, wallop, that looks cool, doesn't it? Uh, 175 for the three. That's OK. That's all right. We've still got money to spend on the rewire, so there's still things to do. I mean, there's bound to be more stuff in here. There you know, in a box well, somewhere, there's going to be... It comes at you out of... Out of blue. Oh, here yeah. you go. You've got, in fact, there. Look. That... Can I take it out? Yeah, sure. That was for... I think please I please tell bought... me it was for Saturday night at the London Palladium or something like that. I think I just bought it um, as part of a job lot. I don't know its history. And it would re revolve and it would spin. Yeah, it'd be in a two spigots spin on there, there yeah, wouldn't it? Right. Just spin. Probably that would be a standard that. fork of some sort, yes. The next thing we find is this mirrored cylinder. So it's timber with it's got a, um, uh, a threaded section at each end. So it would have had a, some sort of motor in the, in the past just to turn it, gently reflecting the light as it sparkles as it goes round and round. This multi-mirrored cylinder is English and was made in the 70s. With its decorative appeal, it could look great hanging in someone's home. Once restored with a couple of hooks and chains, it could be worth around £150. What would you like for this one, then, Jim? A bit of damage doesn't really matter so much on something like this. Let's just put a hook on it and hang it up. Yep. 60 quid? Fine. Yep. Fine. Thank you. Paid £60 for it. We need to just put a threaded nut uh, and lock nut and, and hook on one end, give it a wipe, hang it in the window. It's a little bit of cheap glitz. It'll go immediately. This one next. What have you got in here? That's nice. This, Jim. Medical oh, right. trolley. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you want to get rid of that? Well, I suppose it's all yes. got to go, hasn't it? Yes, no. yeah, not necessarily all the stuff on it, but yes. No, I don't want the, the stuff trolley. on it. You're no, all right. Sure. There's a... Um, White painted three tier medical trolley on large rubber casters in there. Uh, uh, these just sell well. People like them in the house, they're good for retail, they look good anywhere. A good shop item that will sell. Probably used as a prop in a theatre show, this medical trolley would have originally been manufactured for use in a different kind of theatre. Used to transport medical supplies in hospitals, medical trolleys in the antiques trade are often sold on to retail spaces to be used as shelving or display units. Sitting on tall rubber casters, its tubular steel frame has patinated with age. Dating back to the 1960s, once cleaned, it could fetch around £160. Well, you must buy lots of these. What yeah, you pay? yeah, they, 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 you they, um, for one like that, 80 quid. OK. You think I'm mad, don't you? I can see your face going, what no, on earth does no, he want I, that I don't, for? I don't... <laughs> it, it's retail. You know, if you're selling jeans, or yeah, glasses, yeah. or shoes, or whatever. They just seem to go very well. And that'll clean up nicely. 80 quid, I'll clear my trolley. <laughs> Paid 80 quid for it. You know, really, what we've got to do is give it a clean, wipe it, and put it in the shop at sort of 150, 160. So we're, we're doubling our money up. I think I've made today the tiniest dent in this massive collection. But I bought some nice things. A trolley, some music stands and it's all in gloriously unrestored condition. In the condition I want to find everything complete, mostly not damaged, and never had a stick of work done to any of them. It is surprising, really, what is still lurking in sheds. So, well, that was a good day. Drew, thank you thank so you much. much. Lovely to meet you. Great to see you. Really Cheers. Well, thank you. Thanks yep. again. Cheers. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, oh. Drew chose some oh. really interesting things. They're obviously going to have a better time now with Drew and they've had with me on the dusty little shelves. Back in Conway, upholsterer Craig Hughes is turning his attention to the rather tatty Evertort stool Drew picked up on his visit to Retro Boutique in Yorkshire. Right, we've got an Evertort stool here. As you can see, the top's been eaten. So, to start with, what we're going to have to do is get the top unscrewed off.
So the piece of board now we need to take through and cut a piece of foam for the top of it, ready for upholstering. Put glue on both surfaces there. And we'll stick that in position. And that glue's fairly instantaneous. That's stuck to there, so we can trim this off. It's noisy, this. That's that finished. And then we're ready to put the cover on. What I'll do now is I'm just going to tack in the corner to hold that. Now I've done the corners. I'm just going to do the sides. One staple in each side here. Making sure I've got it all level. The rest of it I'll do by eye now. With the last of the screws tightened up, the newly reupholstered Evertort stool has been restored to its former glory. As soon as it hit the website, it was snapped up quickly. Galleries, the galleries down there, the bits yeah. of galleries are marked yeah. by all of those. So you yeah. see that row on the floor there? Yeah. So all them. Yeah. Three of these. Three of these. What's the best? What, so it's got one, yeah. two, three, four. Well, five, you can have all five, of those, six, three of those for 60 quid. Sold. Thank you very much. Done.
I've tied up 60 pounds in three shades and a load of galleries. Now, the galleries I've got uses for immediately. Those I don't have the parts for, and those will sit there, even if they just go into stock, and one day I might be able to find a fitting that we'll be able to use with them. Very happy with these. Can we have yeah. a look at more? Is there more upstairs? Yes, yeah. Good start. Happy days. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. We're now upstairs in the old building, the old shoe factory, and it's lovely. It's really cool. It's like a sort of Dickensian film set. It's, it's quite incredible, but it isn't. It's for real. A lot of this stuff we haven't even sorted through. There's lots of old invoices, accounts, uh, shoes. Yeah, who's, who's the Wellington man? Little wellies. <laughs> Yeah, you, to be honest, you've got, like, a year's worth of stock up here. Oh, if you yeah. just clean it all up and yeah. put it in the shop. There is loads of stuff from a shoe shop up here. All sorts of bits and bobs, really. There you go. Oh. I think it's you. Do you like that? Yeah. Hmm. You like a flag, don't you, Drew? Yeah. It looks like a... Yeah, Patriot. Is that an old one? What's that one? Yeah. Look well, look. Is this, uh, oh, nice Union Jack, yeah. Is this for sale? Yeah, yeah, every, everything's for sale. What's everything's that one? for sale. Well, that one's a bit threadbare, that's isn't it? What is that? Stripey oh, material. Stripey banner. 